Hello everybody, this is Chris from CSS Tricks with video screencast number 8 where I'm going to be talking about CSS formatting. Uh, I'm not talking about using CSS to format things on your page, I'm talking about literally the formatting of your CSS file itself, how your CSS looks inside the file. So I think it's an extremely important thing to think about. I think it's important because you're just in and out of these CSS files all the time, especially during development. You're you're looking at these things, you're scrolling up and down, you're trying to find stuff, troubleshooting, editing stuff. It's it's important that you take the time at the beginning to format them in a way that makes sense to you. You know, there's no one right way to format these things, although there are some, you know, kind of standards and, and typical ways they look, but but just making sure they're organized and spending that time up front, uh, you know, it'll save you time. You know, it's not some long-term investment. It's going to save you time right away in development uh, looking at that stuff. So let's get started looking at a couple of different ways you can format these things. Uh, we're looking at right now the real live CSS file for CSS tricks. This is how it looks. Um, we're going to call this just for lack of a better word, multi-line format. I'm not sure if I really love that title because, of course, there's always multiple lines, but you'll see why maybe we call it that in a minute. Uh, the, in this type of formatting, you got your selector up on one line and your opening bracket, and then attribute, 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 closing bracket. There's one attribute per line. Right here in the body, we got font, background, color, and then we close it up. So uh, there's a uh, the advantage I think to this multi-line format is that the attributes for each CSS selector here are easy to browse. You can see this is the body. Then there's a nice single indent, and then and then e each attribute all in a row. So this format really makes it easier to browse attributes. Uh, it's it's easy to read, you know, the line length isn't too long here. Uh, there's a lot of advantages. I find myself using this way the, the most, especially during development, because, you know, th you're looking for attributes more than I'm looking for selectors, I think. You know, uh, where's that padding? Okay, it's on this line. It's, it's a lot easier to find in this multi-line format. Uh, you'll notice the multi-line format really, in, in the way I use it, really makes use of the tabbing. So here's my, here's my, let's see if I can fit it all in my, that's it, my entire header section. So the div that's header is right here, height 148. And then the unordered lists inside of my header, you know, you're, I'm sure, familiar with this, you know, an unordered list inside of header has, you know, these attributes applied to it. Because this only applies, you know, it's kind of like a, a, a sub, it's a child of header. I indent it, so it, all childs, you know, it's just anything that's uh, more specific than header is kind of lives within an indent. And then I come back out when it's a, you know, a brand new parent element, like my menu bar here, and then use indenting that way. It's it's clean. It's easy to browse. You can see relationships visually. You know you don't have to interpret this line. I can just see. Oh, I see. Because it's indented, it's going to be a child of the element and above it that's indented a little less. So that's kind of the advantage here. It's really kind of easy to browse. But if there's one thing about it, it makes your CSS long vertically. You see how far I have to scroll to get down through all this. It's pretty pretty clean, pretty easy to browse, but it is quite long vertically. So the next one we're going to look at in a, a single line format uh, takes care of that a little bit. So we'll look at that. All right, I think I found a good one here. Check out this CSS file from the blog of Elliot J. Stocks. He's a, a designer and has a real nice blog, and I'm just in here peeking at his CSS a little bit. This is what I would call single line formatted CSS, where uh, e the, the attribute is here, or the, the selector is on the left, and then each of the attributes are just listed in a row. So things are a lot 
longer horizontally, but a lot shorter vertically. There's a lot less to scroll through. In this style of formatting, I think it's a lot easier to browse uh, the selectors, whereas in the multiland format, it was a lot easier to browse the attributes. So this is kind of nice. I can, if I'm looking for, you know, my, the styling for my block quotes, I can just zoom down here and visually scan all the things on the left till I find what I'm looking for. And then everything for block quote is all going to be on this line. Uh, I don't work this way a whole heck of a lot just because, I don't know, I find myself, I don't know, I, I guess it's just a personal preference. It's just not, not my favorite way to have to edit in this long line what I'm trying to edit is harder for me than when those things are all on individual lines so but this definitely is a way to do it so multi-line and single line are definitely kind of two drastically different ways to format things uh, they have some commonalities like good indenting and stuff like that but uh, they're definitely not the two only ways uh, another way that I actually probably use more than just the straight multi-line format is kind of a hybrid where I'll, I'll stick stuff up uh, on the same horizontal line uh, that are related to each other like check this out uh, for for padding padding and margin are two really related attributes sometimes I'll chuck those all up on one line do the same thing with uh, maybe height and width uh, and stuff like that maybe background color and color at attributes that are are related to each other you can chuck up on on, on the same line it's still uh, easier to browse but it saves you a lot of vertical space that way so that's kind of a hybrid between the single line and multi-line format that that might work for you very good uh, like I said these you know they're not too drastically different but they are you know settling into to one format and how you work is kind of important and will definitely save you over time there's probably more commonalities between these these different formats than there are differences. And when I talk about commonalities, I'm just talking about that they're organized in general. They you know they they make sense to you in some way. Uh, for example, like uh, your footer, all your CSS information for your footer should probably be logically make sense. The footer's on the bottom of your page. It should be at the bottom of your CSS, just so. You know, it just makes sense. That's what we should put it. Look, let's look at the bottom of my CSS. All the way at the bottom, there's all that footer stuff. That just makes sense to me. I mean, uh, just, you know, good common sense that way. Another thing organized CSS has in common is shorthand. Check out some of this shorthand right here for padding. Padding and margin uh, share the same uh, CSS shorthand and that you can give it four attributes, four values, rather. Uh, uh, the best way to remember this, it's really easy. I know this can be confusing, but in my early CSS days, I didn't like using CSS shorthand for, for margin and padding because I, I just found it confusing. Like, oh, I always forget which one, which one controls which. The easiest way to remember, it's like a clock. The first one is, tw is 12 noon, or top. The second one is right or three o'clock. The third one is six o'clock or bottom, and the left one is left or nine o'clock. So it's just real easy. Just think about a clock, and you got your margin and padding shorthand. It's really easy. Uh, there's other shorthand. Definitely, background has a shorthand. Let's see if I can scroll up and find one somewhere. Right here is a good example. The if you just declare background instead of like background image or background position, you can put all your background elements in one line. The URL, the file path to where that image is, if it repeats or not, repeat, repeat X, repeat Y, whatever. The the background color that will apply anywhere that image doesn't quite make it. And yep, lots of stuff for background. Font, definitely one of those things for shorthand. Save yourself some room. Uh, actually, let's look at Elliot's one more time. He had some good CSS shorthand for font. Yeah, check that out. Uh, the first thing, when you list two 
pixel sizes in this case. The first one refers to the size of the font. The second one is the line height. So you can declare both the size and the line height really easily. Then go right into the font face and you can do the commas to separate. Uh, you know how this works, right? It looks for Georgia first. If it can't find Georgia, it looks for Times New Roman, all that. We could do a whole thing on that. but And then the font weight is declared right here. This has got everything except for font style. You could also throw italic or normal or whatever you want to in there. But yeah, CSS shorthand, shorthand on fonts is a space saver as well. All right, I'm trying not to ramble on too long here, but there's an important thing I want to mention about how you break these up too. It's not just all about this multi-line, single line business, but also how you decide to break it up. Do you want to break it up into sections based on like header, main content, left sidebar, footer, that type of way, or do you want to, uh, there's the other way to break it up is typography, layout, that type of thing. Uh, I just notice here on Elliot's CSS file that he's got typography all in one section here. And so all of his typography, you know, if, you, if you're troubleshooting and going in or looking to make an update to your site, you can just look in the typography section if that's the type of thing you're trying to change. Uh, likewise, you know, layout right underneath it. If you want to make a layout change, you go to the layout section. Uh, that's another way that I don't work. <laughs> uh, I just... I happen to like the you know being have all my header stuff in one place, whether it's typography or layout or positioning or whatever it is. It's kind of nice to know for me all that stuff is in one place, like you might be familiar with WordPress and the default uh c s s file for WordPress. We're looking at it right now uh they do that big time at least in the in the default theme that most WordPress blogs default to um begin typography and colors and then they just go on and on about these are all typographic rules that this theme uses tons of typographic rules and then it starts all over with begin structure and then it goes and repeats a lot of that stuff with structure so like I said that's just a that's another way to work to break yourself up between typography and structure I'll tell you why I don't like it I have no problem with other people using it. I don't work this way myself, and I'll tell you why. Uh, like right up here, for example, the header. The background color is black because they're that this is where they're talking about typography and colors. So, But then, you know, what if there's something wrong with your header? You don't like some of the spacing or the positioning of it, you know, and you might find this statement in your CSS, and you'll be misled. You'll be like, well, that can't be. It must be some other element around it that's causing that weird spacing because all I see here is that the background color is black. But uh, you might be misled because if you scroll way down here, let's see if we can find it quickly. Oh, well, here's a whole bunch of more rules uh, just for header. And there's no conflicts there. You can do that. It's absolutely fine. In fact, you can be as sloppy as you want. I'm not saying this is sloppy, but you can be as sloppy as you want with your formatting of this thing and as long as it follows the syntax rules it'll be fine it'll render fine you know there's no particular order you need to follow anything like that but this is just for you and your brain and your thoughts and your ease of editing that's that's confusing to me to have those two things broken up like that so that's how i kind of want to end here is just emphasizing that fact that you can be as sloppy as you want to be, you can declare things in any order that you want to. You can write and overwrite rules. Uh, there's nothing in a browser that's going to penalize you for being sloppy in your CSS. It, it, there's a set of rules that your browser will follow to read and interpret and, and reformat this thing to how it needs to be anyway. So you can be as sloppy as you want, and it won't affect how it renders in the browser. But in the end, it's going to save you a lot of time if you aren't sloppy, if you take the time to be organized with this CSS file and, and, and have a consistency, too, between the sites. You know, you code one site, code the next site, and with the same thing, when you jump back bef between the two sites, it's, it's less confusing. So that's it for this week. Thanks, everybody, for listening. There's always more content on CSSTricks.com. See you later. Bye.